Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I want to talk to you again about home storage batteries. Uh, I can't go out in the Kona Electric, so it has to be more about what I can access. Uh, it's a cloudy overcast day here in the UK, in Norfolk, and we're out walking cracker, enjoying the bluebells. I just wanted to say uh, happy birthday to my daughter Maddie. Uh, ever so sorry I can't bake you a cake and deliver it. And uh, yeah, I do appreciate you're stuck in an apartment and you don't have countryside like this to access. So yeah, my thoughts go out to you and other people like yourselves. Today's video, I want to talk about the cost justification of a solar battery. I do see a lot of comments of people saying that uh, they would love a battery but can't justify it. And I've had some thoughts about that and I think you can. I think you can cost justify it and it doesn't take as long as some might think. But it takes some thinking, so I want to share my thoughts with you. So firstly, there are different kinds of battery, and uh, the first one you might think about is the Tesla Powerwall 2, with 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable energy capacity. I had a quotation here for £10,800 for that installed, but I do see online places like Stratford Energy advertising that they can install for under £9,000. So £9,000, 13.5 kilowatt hours, or 10,800, 13.5 kilowatt hours, we're talking between 666 to £800 per kilowatt hour of cost for a Tesla Powerwall 2. But they're not the only battery that's available, is it? So let's have a look at an example. These are actual quotes I've had for the Solex Triple Power. They do them in all sorts of configurations of kilowatt hours, 4.5, 6.3, 9 and 12.6. And as you can see, the prices are a lot lower. The more kilowatt hours that you buy in the system, the less you are paying per kilowatt hour. So even though this triple power quotation looks cheaper than a Tesla Powerwall 2, obviously there's some functionality differences. But what about other options? What about if you built your own? And that's one thing that I'm interested in. Not a DIY build your own, but mix and match the inverter and the batteries yourself. Pylon Tech batteries seem to be one of the cheaper batteries available in the market, and yet performance-wise, they seem to do quite well. The only negative thing that I can see from them is they are susceptible to temperature variations, and they don't charge and discharge as well in lower temperatures. But the price per kilowatt hour of these solutions, these Pylon Tech batteries, looks really, really good. And if you can estimate that an install with an inverter is going to cost you, let's say, £1,200, that might be a little bit conservative, but let's just say, for example, you can then we're talking for a 10 kilowatt hour solution of low 400 pounds per kilowatt hour. That's 200 pounds per kilowatt hour better than a Powerwall 2 and 100 pounds per kilowatt hour better than a uh, triple power battery. So using Pylon Tech batteries and then mixing that to the inverter with the software solution that you prefer might be a better way of going. That's my thoughts at the moment anyway. So that's the costs per kilowatt hour, but what about the savings per kilowatt hour? Well, one kilowatt hour is one unit of electricity that you would normally pay for from the grid. So the savings for each kilowatt hour that you use from your battery, each kilowatt hour that you discharge from the battery, that's saving you using grid energy. So what's the cost of a unit of mm -hmm. grid energy? Uh, for me, it's 15 pence currently. But the savings don't really come from a battery, from your savings of electricity now, this year most of the savings will come further down the line when prices of electricity go up because you're investing in something that's going to save you electricity in the future as well when prices are higher. So it's probably fair to use a figure of 20 pence per kilowatt hour. So for every one kilowatt hour of usage of the battery, you get 20 pence saving. But how much of that battery do you use? Well, if you look at this uh, spreadsheet chart, um, I can see since I've installed this battery that uh, I've used 51-52% of the battery uh, completely. And that's simply because sometimes when you've got a sunny day, um, you're going to be using your solar energy more, so you're not going to be discharging the battery as much and you're only using it for your overnight load. I, I think there'll be days where you use more of the battery and there'll be days where you use less of the battery. So if you average it out, what I'm seeing in my first month of usage is 50% is perhaps perhaps a fair a fair amount to base it on. So instead of 20 pence saving per kilowatt hour, it's only 10, 10 pence. So if you're going to discharge the battery every day, which is sort of the theory, isn't it, that you charge during the day and then you empty it overnight and then you charge again during the day. So you're going to cycle through that process once a day. And if we say then for each kilowatt hour, you're going to only achieve half of its usage. That's the 10 pence, not the 20 pence. 
then for 365 days we're talking 36 pounds 50 worth of savings for every kilowatt hour of energy if you had a 10 kilowatt hour system then we're talking about 365 pounds and 365 pounds over a 10 year lifespan of the battery would be 3650 so that's my so let's say conservative maths of saying if we could buy a 10 kilowatt hour battery and have it installed for £3,650, then it should cost justify within 10 years. So I, I can see that from a cost saving point of view, you can equate forward and see that if you can get a battery for, let's say a 10 kilowatt hour battery at under £4,000, it's going to cost justify in a very quick time at 10 years. But if your savings are greater than that, if, for example, you are a heavy user of the battery, then there's no reason why you couldn't get more than one unit uh, per day used out of it. You could be charging free during the day. You could be charging on Octopus Agile tariffs and being paid to charge your battery overnight. Um, if it isn't really cheap electricity, they could actually be paying you for it. And then you could be using that energy up during the day as well. So there's quite a possibility in a 24-hour period you could utilize the battery for more than the 50% of per kilowatt hour because you've also got the time shifting haven't you in a normal battery installation you're talking about charging during the day discharging at night but then when there isn't a lot of sun during the day you might have a low energy tariff and you might choose to charge overnight which you wouldn't normally do and then use the electricity during the day and the night that's also not taking into account selling energy back to the grid so there's more income potential than just the 50% of the unit of electricity that you might use. But anyway, future things aren't necessarily my point. My point is that the 50% of the unit of energy cost is a very low estimate in my mind of what energy you can actually save. But if you've oversized your battery and have more kilowatt hours than you actually need, then what's going to happen is you're going to be charging and discharging it less. So your battery's going to be used less, so it's going to last longer. So even if you've got a battery which you're not making the best use of financially, is it still worthwhile to you because you're not using the battery so much, it's going to last longer? The payback argument is an odd one, isn't it? Because I honestly don't think it's uh, an argument that you need to worry about because if you are really genuinely sat there thinking I would like a battery but the payback period isn't right so I'm not going to do it then you are considering finances before the object before the actual battery before your desire for having one and if finances are what's important to you then payback reaching net zero isn't something you should be concerned about is what should I invest this money in that can make me some money if money is all that's important to you, you're looking for an investment. And a battery at the moment is not an investment. It's a potential investment if getting money back from um, virtual power plants becomes very, very popular and very profitable. But at the moment, it's there's no financial profit to be made from installing a battery. There are cost savings and you can get your money back over a period of time. But people aren't buying batteries to make a profit so you know what is your concern are you concerned about making money are you concerned about cost just the finances or do you want a battery for all of the reasons that most people are having a battery for because it's green because you don't want to use the grid you want to feel you're part of something you just don't like paying grid energy prices like me you're trying to keep your energy prices low for the future when you're retired so that you don't have high income to spend later there's lots of reasons for having one that aren't necessarily i want to make a profit i want to do the best thing financially so i really am an advocate that buying a battery is not about the payback period it is not about um making a profit is not a financial argument for it is can you afford to do it in the first place and do you want to do it and if you can afford to then it's no different to going on holiday or buying a conservatory or um, having your garden changed around having a new patio laid there's so many things that we invest in in our lives to make our quality of life better I consider a battery as one of those items. It's adding to your house. It's adding to the value of your house. It's adding to the value of your life. So the payback period is less important. 
So if we're concerned about payback and the finances for a battery, then if we look at this Solex triple power battery configuration as an example, the important thing to do is pick which battery configuration suits your needs. Because if you put the 12.6 kilowatt hour configuration in, and yet you're only going to use two and a half kilowatt hours a day, it's not going to pay for itself very quickly. So if it's important to you, then you need to size the battery according to your needs. But if functionality or long life is your primary concern, then you might want to oversize your configuration and have a battery bigger than you actually need so that it won't discharge completely in a single day. Take your time, get the right battery and enjoy having it, I say. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye bye for now.